to the woodshop, everybody. I'm Jim B. Brock. In today's episode, we're going to make these really cool serving trays. Let's get started. Welcome back to the woodshop, everybody. I'm Jim B. Brock, and today we're going to make these really cool serving trays. They are two foot across by one foot down. We're going to put some handles on them when we're done. But for right now, we're going to make the wood part of this. And to start with that, we're going to go to the big box retailer and get us a full eight foot long stud, not a stud length stud. A stud length stud is 92 and 5 eighths, and a full 96 inch stud is a full eight foot. We want to find one that's nice and straight, and that's a little hard to do today. And you're going to pay a premium for this thing, unfortunately. So you want to find one, pick through the pile, find one that has as few knots in it and is as straight as possible. To see how straight they are, you simply look down the axis, and you'll be able to see if it's curved one way or the other. Same thing on this axis. You'll be able to see if it's curved or whatever. You want one that's got nice tight grain, very few knots, and is as straight as it can be. So let's go over to the table saw and start working this piece up. Okay, the first thing we need to do is start to manipulate our tube before. As I mentioned earlier, it needs to be straight and have a good tight grain on it. And so this board's in pretty good shape. It has just a few knots in there, but we, they're tight and we can work around that. So the next thing you want to look at on the anatomy of the board is that it has this rounded edge on all four sides. And that's from the factory. They sand that off and uh, makes for a pretty board, but in this case, doesn't work for us. So we need to cut this off because as we butt the um, slats together on the tray, we want all square edges. So to do that, I'm going to set my table saw. This board's three and a half inches wide. So uh, we've got plenty, we're gonna go down to three inches, so we've got plenty of wood here. I set my fence at three and a quarter inches. Now, if you'll look at your blade, you'll discover that you have teeth that are alternating. And that amount of material that comes out of the blade cut is called a kerf. So when you measure to your fence, you always want to find the tooth that is towards the fence. So we're going to come down here, three and a quarters there, and then again on the back side of the blade to make sure that your fence is square to the blade or parallel to the blade. The next thing you want to do is check and make sure that your height is set right. You just barely want the, the whole tooth coming up out of the two before. The next thing we're going to do is run this two before through there and cut this edge off and make a nice square edge. Okay, we will now repeat that same process and reset our fence down to three inches which I've already done. And we will now flip it over and cut the other side off. Okay, I brought it over to my compound miter saw and we're gonna cut it down to four foot just to make it a little bit easier to work with. Now, like I said, this is a full eight foot or full 96 inches. So we're gonna make a mark here at 48 inches uh, which will be right in the middle. Now what I want to do here is actually cut right down the center of that line because I want two pieces to be pretty much the same length as it goes. So I'm just going to line this up and we're going to cut it just like that. Now you can uh, verify and put these together and tail it if you want to. It looks like I probably ought to trim this one just a touch. Oh, the edge isn't square. And that's something to look out for. Uh, just because it comes from the factory doesn't mean that the edge is completely square on that. So we maybe should have tailed that first, but here we go. We're just gonna clean it up. Now we've got two pieces. They're three inches wide. They are four foot long. They're the same length. And the reason I do it this way, instead of cutting it already down into two foot sections, is because it's dangerous to cut them that short over on the table saw. So we're gonna go back to the table saw and learn a new skill. What I need is to make three equal size slats out of this board. This is an inch and a half wide. So I'm setting my blade at a half an inch and I'm setting it on the wrong side of the line. Typically, if you wanted a half an inch out of here, you would set your, your tape with the half inch mark 
on the right hand side of the blade. In this case, if I do that, then one of my slats will be thinner than the others. I need three slats out of this one board that are going to be approximately the same thickness. So what I'm really doing is setting it for 3 8 but I'm setting it at the half inch mark on the left hand side of the blade. So I'm going to give just a little strong of 3 8 actually out of my board. So when you do this, nice, slow, easy, and use your push sticks and keep in mind where that blade is at all time. Now, this is a home grade saw. This is not my big commercial grade saw. The motor on my big commercial grade saw is big enough to rip through this thing and I can actually raise the blade high enough to do this in one pass. But that's not the kind of saw most of you have at home. This is your home grade saw. You buy them at your big box retailers. It's quite a bit smaller all the way across. The table's smaller, the motor's smaller, the amount of work you can do is smaller. So just take your time, cut this first one, let your saw take a break, and then cut the next one. And you probably ought to take a break too. So here we go, nice, slow, and easy. Okay, that went pretty smoothly, and you can see that I've got that cut, and it did not cut all the way through. It came most of the way through. So what I did is I cut this board this way. To make it right, you turn it like this, and then we will feed it back through. And this is where you can have binding as well. So nice, slow, and easy. Be safe about your work. cut out of there nice and, and, and really good really there may be a little bit of a lip right here because of the way the board moves through that's fine we're gonna sand that off but that was a good safe cut and we're gonna do this one more time here and then we may have to feed that last one through just for a trim out but you need to watch because where it's not this is a weak spot and it can break and when you're pulling that through be sure not to squeeze it if you squeeze it you're adding the um, chances of kickback. So let that board come through there, hang on to it firmly so it doesn't go that way, but don't squeeze it and put it on the blade. So I'm going to do that one more time and we will then have three slats. Okay, now that we've cut our two before into six slats, um, you've learned a new skill and I think that's great. It's okay if you have some paper thin pieces like this at the end, that just simply means all three of your pieces ended up being the same thickness. We're gonna sand these here in just a minute, uh, but again, this is our single two before, now cut into six slats. And the reason I left four foot slats, the shorter the board is that you're trying to resaw, the more dangerous it is to cut. And I don't want you guys to lose any fingers or anything. Please respect your saw, that's all I can say. But once you've learned how to do that and you're comfortable with doing it, there's all kinds of new applications you can use it for. For example, this is an antique reproduction wine crate that I built in a different video, and the link to that will be in the description um, page here for that. Now, so the next thing we wanna do is go cut these down to our two foot length. So let's go back over to the compound miter saw. Okay, before I cut these down the length, I need to kind of lay them out and make sure, because occasionally, uh, you know, like I said, these studs aren't great. Occasionally one of them is going to be warped, so you don't want to use that one across your, your bottom plane. So I found four of them that I liked the most, and I kind of laid them out, and then, you know, kind of arrange them to where the knots aren't all in the same place, and kind of get them cleaned up like that. So, all right, so the next thing we want to do is verify our measurements. This should be 12 inches, and it is. And so I'm going to take these and cut them in half directly. They're, they were four foot to begin with. And so we want to come here and make a two foot mark like that. And we'll put that one up on top like this. And then we'll go over here and cut those all the same length. Okay, I brought my four pieces over here and I laid them out. I got the one with the mark on it on top. What you want to make sure is that this is all straight up and down on the end. And if you need to, use a square to, to verify that because you want them to all be the same length. In this case, I'm going to cut this line right down the center of this line, not on one side or the other, because I want all four of my pieces to be the same length. 
So we're going to break a little bit of a rule there. And it's okay to cut multiples. This is called cutting multiples. As long as you've got enough fence to support it in the back. You don't ever want to go higher than your fence because then that top piece can kick out and, and cause you damage or injury. You don't want to do that. So I've got it all set up. I'm going to pull that down. I'm going to be right where I want to be there. And I'm going to hold this firm and cut that for you. Okay, I got my two extra pieces that we cut earlier and I'm going to make a mark on them at one foot because that's how wide our project is. And in this case, I want to cut on the left hand side of the line. So I'm going to bring my, uh, make sure they're flush on the end, bring this down and look at it, make sure it's where it needs to be. And I'm going to cut them and I got them, I got them two at a time. So I need four. So I just got to make two cuts. Okay, now you're pretty much ready to assemble them. Um, what I've done is I've already sanded these, so whatever method of sanding you're gonna do, either a drum sander, or a belt sander, or just your palm sander, sand them all up really good, because it's gonna be really hard to get into this little cook uh, whenever you get down in here, this little nook and cranny there is really hard to sand. So what I'm gonna do next is just take, I've, I've laid them out to where I got my pretty sides up, and I'm gonna take just regular old glue, this is wood glue, sorry, regular wood glue and I'm going to put a liberal bone mount on here but not so much that it's going to squeeze out because it's hard to clean up the squeeze out on this particular project um, so I just put a nice liberal amount on there and I take it over here and I'm going to lay it down on there and if you want to smear it around a little bit you can do it right here at this point then I take my pneumatic brad nailer and I'm using 5 8 inch brads on this and I'm going to drive them in it there to the corner I'm going to get them as square as I can to start with. So this first one, you got to take a little time because you want this as square as you can be. As you do this, just take your time, put two in the top, and then you're going to want to squeeze this together the best you can. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. If you have glue clamps, put them in glue clamps when you're done here. Tighten them down as good as you can without putting indentions on the sides. The tighter, the stronger. Ultimately, the glue will hold this once it's dry. Now, if you're going to, you can also, if you want to do a little more advanced project, you could have glued these this together and made a panel out of it. Um, I'm working under the assumption most of y'all don't have glue clamps and things like that. So this will work just fine. So again, we're going to the, find the pretty side, glue on the other side. It would be stronger if you glued it all together as a panel, but it's plenty strong this way. And again, we're going to start at the top. We're going to line it up at the bottom. Squeeze it together as tight as we can. Okay. Now, we're going to let that dry before we do too much with it. But I always like to take a little wood putty, fill in these, these holes. Since you're gonna let, it, let the glue dry, you've got plenty of time to do this as well. So just work that wood putty down in those holes. It'll just make this a much prettier project. If you like these kinds of projects, I have an entire channel of arts and crafts woodworking projects, home repair videos, and maybe also some travel videos if you're interested in that. My wife and I like to travel. So please go to my channel, subscribe to my channel, and then also hit like on these videos. Let's me know which ones you like better and which ones I keep, keep making. So far this was a really easy project and I hope you learned a new skill. Woodworking is fun. Um, we got two of them built for about $10. And that's a nice cheap way. Um, when my wife gets done with these, she puts a, a graphic on there with her silhouette machine. Um, I think she charges about $35, $40.
uh, when, when they're all said and done. They make nice serving trays. We use these at our own home. We use them for family gatherings because nobody sits at the kitchen table anymore. When you're done, if you got a little pieces that hang over or whatever, just run them back through your sander, clean up the edges. But I would wait at least a half hour, um, probably better like overnight even, so before you get her done. And that's our project for today. Thanks for watching.